real hero, but I'm pretending to be one. It's fun to be a hero because heroes have integrity. Integrity is choosing to be truthful in whatever you say and do. And heroes, above everything else, are truthful. Of course, it's also fun to pretend to be the villain. Now you will know the power of the Bucket. For I, Buckethead, am your second cousin once removed. No. That's impossible! We look nothing alike! Would I lie to you? Uh, yeah. Probably. You're right, I probably would. Ah. Uh, 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 the good thing about pretending to be the bad guy is that I can stop pretending anytime I want. But as you'll see in today's story, when you cheat and lie in real life, it's a little harder to take your mask off. 
It's really hard to breathe in here. I'll see you all back here soon. <coughs> the Bible. It's 66 books of history, stories, letters, and poetry that fit together to form God's one big story. The epic adventure of how he created us and loves us so much that he made a way to rescue us. As we travel through the Bible, from Genesis to Revelation, we discover people who met God and found their lives changed forever. Now, for an amazing story, inspired by the book of 2 Kings, chapter 5. Naaman was the commander of the army of Aram, one of Israel's greatest enemies. Forward, march! Though Naaman was a wealthy man, he had one problem that no doctor could solve. He had a terrible skin disease. Oh, ah, make it go away. Then Naaman heard news of a prophet in Israel, Elisha, who might be able to help. But instead of going straight to Elisha, Naaman took rich gifts to the king of Israel, along with a letter from the king of his own land explaining how important he was. The king of Israel frowned as he read the letter from his enemy, the king of Aram. I am sending my servant Naaman to you with this letter. I want you to heal him of his skin disease. What? N no! I I I'm not God. Your king is trying to pick a fight with me. But I, I just no, want- No, this thing, not this thing. La, 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 la. The king of Israel made such a fuss that Elisha heard the news and sent a messenger. It was probably his trusted servant, Gehazi. I am a good guy. Trust me. Gehazi took Elisha's message to the king. Elisha says, tell the man to come to me. Gehazi raced back home to help Elisha prepare for the important visitor. And sure enough, the king of Israel sent Naaman straight to their doorstep. And Gehazi he peeked out the window. Look how low the chariot is riding. What's in the back? Embroidered robes and bags of something? Gehazi. Hurry up. You gotta look good for this guy. I'll, I'll get you your best robe. Nope. You're not wearing the robe? I'm not going out. Not going out? No, you are. But my robe? What's wrong with your robe? It's old. It's not even a decent name brand like Mechuzedek or Queen Jezebel. Elisha sent his servant out the door with a message for Naaman. Are you the prophet? Uh, no. But l l let me just say that is one excellent chariot. I, I see you got the golden hubcap. Where's Elisha? He says, go, wash yourself in the Jordan River seven times. Then your skin will be healed. You will be pure and clean again. Oh, I thought Elisha would come out himself. I know, right? Look, can't he just say some words and wave his hand and, you know, make me better? That's what I was thinking, too. Oh, and the Jordan River? I mean, it's full of muck and tadpoles and... Oh, forget it. <laughs> Name it tore off, angry but his servants convinced him to follow Elisha's instructions. Naaman dipped seven times in the murky Jordan River, and when he rose from the water on his seventh time, what? His skin was perfectly clean. He was healed. Unbelievable. Naaman raced back to Elisha's home. This time, the prophet came outside along with Gehazi. Naaman marveled at his unmarked arms and hands. Now I know that there is no God anywhere except in Israel. Please take a gift from me. Gehazi inched closer to the chariot. He could see the richly colored robes hanging over the bags of gold and silver. Is that a genuine Mechilzadek robe? Uh-huh, the real deal. Just have your servants unload around back and I'll... Uh... Nope. I serve the Lord. You can be sure that he lives. And you can be just as sure that I won't accept a gift from you. What? Please, I'm begging you. He's begging you, Elisha. But Elisha still refused to take a single coin from Naaman and send him away in peace. Elisha went back inside, leaving Gehazi speechless on the doorstep. What? No, seriously? Gehazi could still see the dust kicked up by the horse's hooves. Elijah should have taken something. If he didn't want it, he could have just given it to me. With that, 
Kihazi took off running down the road. His arms pumped and his sandals flapped as he crested the hill and came up alongside the chariot. Naaman pulled it to a halt. Is everything all right? It's fine. Fine. <sighs> My uh, master sent me to say that uh, 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 two young prophets have come to visit. Yeah, yeah, that's it. Uh, please give them 75 pounds of silver and two sets of clothes. Oh, of course. Take twice as much. Naaman's servants carried the heavy bags of silver and clothing back up the road. But as they approached Elisha's house... Hey, thanks. <laughs> I got it from here. Straining beneath the weight of his heavy load, Gehazi snuck inside and stashed the clothing and silver in his room. Then he hurried back out and strolled through the front door. <laughs> Can't whistle. Elisha studied him with sharp eyes. Where have you been? Oh, me? I didn't go anywhere. Didn't my spirit go with you? I know Naaman greeted you. I know you took money and clothes. I was just being nice to the horses, making their load lighter. You and your family after you will have Naaman's skin disease. But th then I can't wear my new robes. Sure enough, Gehazi's skin was soon covered with sores, just like Naaman's was. Gehazi's lie had won him some new clothes, but... It had cost him Elisha's trust and a full and healthy life. Elisha's servant Gehazi told some lies, didn't he? He lied to himself, saying he needed more stuff than he already had. He lied to Naaman to get the stuff. Then he lied to Elisha about all of it. Maybe Gehazi wasn't a bad guy, but would you be able to trust somebody like that? Never! What if someone lied to you? What if they said they were going to keep a secret, but they let it slip out? Or if they said they'd do one thing, but then did something else instead? Do you still trust them? Oh, no! It's harder to trust people after they've let you down, right? Correct! It works the same way when we're the ones who tell the lie or don't do what we say we'll do. It can make us come across as the villain. So, Here's the one very important thing to remember. When you're not truthful, you lose trust. When you are truthful, you're the hero! And if you need even more evidence that being truthful is the way to go, look to Jesus. He always did exactly what he said he would do. He can be trusted no matter what. That's what I want to be. What do you say, Buckethead? Will you turn from your villainous ways? Do I get to keep the bucket? Sure. It's a deal! Great! Go be heroes, everyone! Bye! Hey, Buckethead, how do you feel about tacos? 